Hello students let us continue chapter 9 in this video we will learn about pisciculture sericulture and about the use of microorganisms pisciculture is the rearing breeding and management of fish on a large scale fish are reared for oil and for meat they are sources of protein they are rich sources of protein shark liver oil and cod liver oil is oil extracted from the liver of these fish and they are good sources of vitamin a and vitamin d these oils are also rich in omega 3 fatty acids fish can be classified into two groups based on their habitat based on the place where they live there are fresh water fish which live only in fresh water like in rivers and lakes which have very less salinity and there are marine fish which live in the oceans where there is high salinity examples of fresh water fish are the katla rohu singara and malli examples of marine fish are hilsa pomfret salmon sardine tuna and the bombay duck Hilsa fish is the pulasa in Telugu the one which we get during the monsoon season and pomfret is chanduva in Telugu next to move on to sericulture the rearing of silk worms is called sericulture the silk moth is an insect that provides silk yarn silk moth scientifically is called bombyx mori the female moth lays eggs and from these eggs larva come out the larva are actually the silk worms you can also call them as the caterpillar of the silk moth silk worms feed on mulberry leaves and they make cocoons around themselves cocoon is the protective covering or the envelope that the larva spins around itself it is a protection for the pupa which is the next phase after the caterpillar phase and this cocoon is made up of silk fibers this filamentous substance which the larva will secrete is actually the silk yarn silk is obtained from this cocoon so in silk farms the silk is removed from the cocoon and it is treated with chemicals to obtain a silk yarn so breeding and management of silk worms for the production of silk is known as sericulture it is an important cottage industry in india next we have apiculture breeding and management of honey bees for commercial purposes is called apiculture honey bees are beneficial to human beings they are reared for honey and also for bees wax bees wax is secreted from the glands of the honey bees and it is deposited on the honey comb bees wax is used in cosmetics like in lip balms lip gloss skin creams etc and honey you already know it is a food product the place where bees are reared to get commercial products is known as an apiary apiary is a place where bee hives are kept bee hives are artificially made and they are enclosed structures which are constructed where the bees can live and they can survive bees are generally reared on artificial bee hives that they have frames and on the frame they can build their honeycombs the walls of these honeycombs are made of wax this wax is actually secreted by the bees themselves honey is a thick sweet fluid made by the bees from the nectar of flowers it consists of water sugar minerals enzymes and vitamins the colony of honey bees comprises of the queen males and workers honey is produced by this colony the queen lays eggs workers are females but they cannot lay eggs they just produce honey and wax the males are called drones bees wax is used to make candles ointments polishes cosmetics etc let us learn some useful microorganisms saprophytic bacteria these are useful bacteria saprophytes are those which are 
acting on dead matter and decomposing them and the excretory products and the dead remains of these plants are converted into simpler substances so these bacteria they clear the earth of all waste that is why they are called decomposers or nature's scavengers so they are useful in decomposition bacteria also help in maintaining soil fertility some of them help in fixing atmospheric nitrogen by converting them into nitrates which can be used by plants these bacteria live in the roots of leguminous plants such as peas and beans the digestive tract of herbivorous animals contain bacteria here the bacteria break down cellulose of plant cells into simple sugars so that it can be absorbed into the blood so animals can digest cellulose human beings cannot digest cellulose in the food industry manufacturing of vinegar curd and cheese involves bacterial fermentation bacteria are also used in the production of tea coffee and cocoa coffee and cocoa are derived from beans these beans are fermented dried roasted and then powdered for the process of fermentation bacteria are used Fer fermentation will help in increasing the aroma of these coffee and cocoa bacteria are also used in the production of tea it helps in ripening of the tea leaves after ripening the aroma and flavor of the tea will increase so therefore bacteria are also used in production of tea coffee and cocoa lactic acid citric acid and alcohol are also obtained by the action of bacteria the process of treating animal skin to produce leather is called tanning separation of fibers from the long stem of fiber plants such as flax and jute is called retting of fibers tanning and retting are done by the action of bacteria medicines such as antibiotics and vitamin b complex tablets they are also manufactured with the help of bacteria then let us look about some useful fungi fungi are also na nature scavengers because they decompose dead decaying bodies of plants and animals they also help in making the soil fertile morels which are a kind of mushrooms and some other mushrooms are also eaten they are consumed as food some varieties of mushrooms are poisonous whereas some can be eaten as food edible mushrooms those which are eaten they are a good source of vitamin b and vitamin d minerals such as copper and potassium they are actually a very delicious and nutritious food item then let us look at the uses of yeast yeast is used in preparing bakery products bread it is used for making bread alcohol and alcoholic drinks are also produced by fermentation by yeast wine is prepared by fermentation of grapes and beer is prepared by fermentation of barley and yeast is involved in the process idli and dosa is made from a mixture of dal and rice here also yeast is involved after few hours due to the action of yeast the mixture will rise and it will become soft and fluffy and sour this is by the action of yeast yeast is also used in preparing vitamins and antibiotics penicillin is obtained from the fungi penicillium notatum penicillin is effective in destroying many kinds of disease causing bacteria how is bread made baking of bread involves yeast and sugar yeast and sugar are mixed with flour and this makes the dough dough is kept in a warm place the yeast will act on the sugar in the dough and it will result in the release of carbon dioxide and alcohol the dough rises because of the carbon dioxide when bread is baked carbon dioxide and alcohol escape from the loaf and it makes the bread porous and fluffy how is curd made 
Curd is made when milk sugar which is lactose is converted into lactic acid. Lactose gets converted to lactic acid by the action of lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is a bacteria. So for making curd we take some warm milk and we add some small amount of curd to warm milk. Lactobacillus will start multiplying at a very fast rate. As they multiply, they convert lactose into lactic acid. So this makes the milk sour, thick and we call this curd. Once curd is made, it is shifted to a cooler place to avoid further multiplication of the bacteria. If we leave curd outside without keeping it in the fridge, it will lead to more souring and we will not be able to eat it. So that is why after curd is made, we immediately shift it to the fridge to keep it in a cool place. And in that cool place, bacteria will not further multiply. What are the uses of honey? Honey helps in increasing the hemoglobin level in the blood. It is considered as a good laxative. It is also a blood purifier and it protects us against cough and cold. How can you test the purity of honey? You can take a glass of water and add one tablespoon of honey into it. The honey should not dissolve in water. Only then it is considered to be pure. If it is adulterated or impure, honey will dissolve in water. Pure honey will make a continuous thread and it will settle at the bottom of the glass.